It's five o'clock and we're off the clock. I'm B Scott. Today with us, we got Luke Naylor with the Arkansas Game and Fish. Next to him, you have Cuz from Cuz Outboards. On the far right over there, you have uh, Frank West. Uh, you know him from the race series. You know him from building motors at uh, West Performance. And beside him, you have Brian Jessen. And everybody knows Brian. Yeah. And you have my dad here with me. Today we're going to get into the uh, duck season, what we're seeing in the timber, uh, what's to come, hopefully, and I think we're just going to break down just everything that's going on in the wildlife in Arkansas right now. Um, I would like to go ahead and just get right into this. Let's start with, you know, where are you from, and how'd uh, you get started? Yeah, I grew up in Kansas, South Central Kansas, just a little town, about 1,500 people when I first remember the town population it's sign, Valley Center, Kansas, just north of Wichita, a few miles, uh, so... Grew up there, um, went to Kansas State University for my undergrad in wildlife and fisheries biology, and uh, started out right after high school working for the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks, actually on uh, McPherson Valley Wetlands, which was a brand new area at the time, mm -hmm. and I uh, worked for their first manager, getting that uh, wetland area up and, up and running with his help and a uh, great mentorship from him, and uh, then went to graduate school out at uh, UC Davis in California, lived out there working on Central Valley Wetlands for about six years, which is a really, really cool place. It doesn't get quite as much press back here, uh, but a phenomenal uh, duck, uh, duck and duck hunting culture out there in the Central Valley of California that goes back as far as it goes back here, actually, in the east. So, so what, uh, what actually brought you back to Arkansas? Yeah, jobs. So I uh, was out there working on wetland management work pretty much the whole time I was out in California. You know, mm -hmm. a couple of years, yeah, grad school, but I was working doing private wetland management uh, programs primarily for the state out there mm -hmm. um, and just started looking. My, my wife's a professor, um, so we started looking for jobs uh, we kind of had between the Rockies and the Mississippi was mm -hmm. where we thought we'd want to settle uh, right, long term. Right. We knew California wasn't a long term solution for us. Mm -hmm. uh, cool place to visit. Um, I like going back to say hello to folks, but that, right. that wasn't a long-term uh, option. For Arkansas, us. Arkansas that. is much nicer. Yeah, like and I it, think. yeah, and it's just like I was, I was the uh, in charge of the job search for the family, so mm -hmm. I just kept looking, and I'd find something that might suit me, and then immediately start looking for something that might suit her, and then kind of found mm -hmm. a job opening here for the waterfowl biologist at Game and Fish in uh, early '06, and then ended up finding. Just randomly find an old job posting for a biology professor at UCA at the same right. time, and we we got both of those jobs in '06. And so, what made you get back. into the wildlife area? I mean, what made you get in this field? I mean, was it something yeah. you always wanted to do growing up, or is, did you just like to hunt and you just wanted you know enjoy it for your life? Yeah, both. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was I was one of those weird kids that um, in third grade I knew what I wanted it to do when right. I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I don't know exactly how that started. Lots of hunting and, and, and fishing all the time. My, my uncle and now now his youngest son, my, my cousin, um, runs a, a, a long multi-generational farm west of Wichita out mm -hmm. toward, toward Pratt. Uh, so lots of time spent up there. There were five boys, uh, only about four years between the oldest and the youngest, I think, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we spent a ton of time out there on his farm growing up. That helped a lot, you know, just wandering around um, out back of their house uh, frequently every mm -hmm. year growing up. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it, our weekend activities were, were going hunting. My dad was a school teacher, so that meant nothing was happening Monday through Friday. But every Saturday we could count on I, I was going hunting somewhere with dad. Right. And, and got to know people in the, in, the, uh, in the field, you know, that one individual I worked for was a mentor who I got to know by hunting public land. You know, went out and spent time on, on wildlife areas and got to know this guy, and he was willing to take me under his wing. Right. As soon as I turned 18 and met all the requirements to get hired, right. yeah. Um, the rest was history. Some, somewhere in all that, I got focused. I said, ducks is really going to be it for me. Right. Um, I don't know exactly when that was, but, um, you know, maybe early teenage years. But do, you, yeah. do you often get a chance to go um, uh, duck hunt in Arkansas a lot? I mean, I know your busy season is probably during duck season. You know, it's, but it's all the time. It's all the time. And right? I, yeah, a couple things. I hunted a lot when I was a waterfowl biologist. Mm -hmm. um, I've hunted less the past couple seasons as the wildlife division chief. Right, um, right. And I've hunted less because I've got two teenage kids. Yeah, we looked at the track record. You're pretty successful. I mean, congratulations, you know. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's, it's been good. Um, this change to administration was a little bit uh, little different. I'm enjoying it a lot. Right. But, uh, 
something had to give for for the last couple seasons. What's what's gives my own personal recreation. So right. uh, keeping up with family stuff and work stuff. That's first. right. It's, so, it's hard. Yep. You know, uh, so, you know, this podcast is important to us because, you know, obviously we're Havoc Boats. I'm sure yep. you've seen a lot of them oh, yeah. on there. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Arkansas, uh, we saw a lot of boats in Arkansas. And it's important for us to see the uh, wildlife of Arkansas, whether it's ducks, fish, or deer, or whatever, uh, to keep growing and advancing. Um, you know, there's a lot of people take their kids out duck hunting. And, and you know, so, so it's really important for us, not only because it's the way we make our living, but we also represent our customers. And, it uh, is. So so once you got your feet planted in Arkansas, what was the first, you know, attack on, like, what were you going after to, to, to help Arkansas hunters? Yeah, so we, you know, my background was in, in, in active wetland management stuff. So I did my master's work on um, the impacts of moist soil management in California wetlands and what worked, what doesn't work, you know, what kind of, what produced well, what didn't produce well. Uh, so... I was a little bit different. Most waterfowl biologists throughout the state are more, um, you know, more population focused. Like they're they're looking, they're, they're frankly they're better at it than I was about looking at, uh, you know, maybe diving in really really deep on bandy data, for example, or, um, <coughs> you know, really really deep on monitoring work, and which we've we've done plenty of that since I've been here and before I got here. But my focus was really on habitat work. So we've kind of upped our game as far as wetland management. Um, and then, you know, grew our active wetland management program and before, which was, this is not because somebody else didn't want to do it or didn't try. It was just that some, some things came together. We were able to push for a lot more active wetland management program that's been running for a while now. Uh, and then we, of course, got to work on, on looking at uh, Green Tree Reservoir renovation work all the way back. First started talking about that way back in 2007, which is a year after I got here. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of my work has been on habitat type stuff, not mm -hmm. not like the population monitoring. Stuff. So gotcha. so focusing on the the habitat part of it. What about the the duck actual population? Has have you seen over the course of the last I don't know five five years? Yeah, so it's uh, so we do a couple things there, right? There's the breeding population survey that that counts ducks every spring uh, in the prairies and the, the breeding grounds, the prairie poddles of Canada and the U.S. and the boreal forest. Um, and then we've worked we worked back in 2009, 10, 11 to modernize the way we survey ducks in Arkansas in the winter. So we do a really formal um, transect base, you know. So you just you have strata throughout the state, and you fly strips in an airplane counting ducks. It's a lot better than flying around and saying, there's some ducks, there's some ducks. Right. How many, right? So, mm -hmm. right. so we, we modernized that. So those are the two you know, pieces of information that we've got. And, yeah, duck populations are, are down. It, it is very down. And, and, and we, you know, the reason why it's important for us because we actually talk to our customers. I mean, we have, have a, over 10,000 customers all over the uh, southeast United States, you know, Kansas, Texas. Missouri, you know, so so we get a really good feedback on, on, hey, are you having a good season? Are you having a good season? And this year just obviously was not a good season for Arkansas. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's upsetting uh, for our residents. It's upsetting for uh, our customers. Uh, we have a lot of outstaters come to Arkansas uh, and just reported terrible numbers of ducks. I mean, there, you have people that drove from South Carolina and Georgia all over to uh, experience a flooded timber experience, and it just the numbers are just down, and it's it's hard to explain that. And so, so we got Brian Jessen, and we got Cuz Cuz Outboards, and Frank here. You know, you know these guys. You know, we we, we brought them to the podcast because obviously they they hunt in the north part of Arkansas, they hunt in the south, and by me, of course, you know. Um, so, so I mean, Brian, I mean, and Frank, what are you? Both these guys from uh, Pope Conis area? Yes, sir. Northeast, and, and, Northeast Arkansas. And and and, uh, and you know, me and Brian are partners, of course, in this business. And and, and B Scott, uh, we're we're a family-owned business. And I don't duck hunt much, a whole lot, no more. We're busy at the boat plant, and I, I do a lot of deer hunting. And then, of course, you know, I have to go out of state to kill quality deer. This is <laughs> another subject, but. The, the problem, uh, I mean, when, Brian, what's the problem you're seeing? And, Frank, what are you seeing one at a time? But what are you all seeing? I mean, you told me several times that, hey, Tim, you ready to come duck hunting? I'm like, he said, Tim, there's just no ducks up here. The water's, we're not getting water fast enough. It's, it's uh, and, th and that's, you, you know, know, some I mean, of that can't be helped. You know, a dry yeah. year is a dry year. You know, a warm year is a warm year. And, then, you know, patterns of, of weather, you know, they definitely change, you know. Um, 
Water's very important for waterfowl, you know. You'd, you'd hit earlier uh, about the, uh, you know, moist soil units, and, you know, that was one of the questions that had come in, so I, I'll just touch on the base of it. Yep. But we've had a lot of people ask, and uh, one of the questions that come in was moist soil units. Um, over the years, I know they're set up for, you know, somewhat of a rest area, maybe a feeding area. There's been different programs to try to, you know, provide an area for the ducks, but but that being said, one of the questions was, is why are why are they not seeing waterfowl using these moist soil units? Why are we not seeing ducks on them? That was kind of one of the questions that had came in. And I think that's so, also something that you, so. you talked about earlier too. Cause and it, and yeah. it come this question come from a biometa standpoint, like talking about hollow well, you know. Right. Down, yeah, talking so. about the rest areas and stuff. But, yeah. And so I mean so, so you're asking, well, why are you, why aren't these rest areas being used? Why like, why is there no water on the rest areas? Is that what you're asking them? Uh, yeah. Uh, one of our rest areas didn't have a lot of water this year. And then uh, just over the years, you know, it just seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse. You're not seeing as many ducks on, our, on Hollowell and Rape Plantation as you used to. And I think a lot of people are just kind of wondering what's going on, you know? You know? Yeah, I mean, so duck populations continually this year were, the, were half what they were in 2016. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone needs to frame their, and it, it's for some reason it kind of came as a surprise to folks. Like we hit this year, and it's the driest year on record. Um, in a, well, on record, it's a bold statement. A long, long time, right? Mm -hmm. Driest right, right, um, yeah. mm -hmm. October, November, always the driest. <clears throat> September, always the driest month. I mean, did you guys week. know it was going to be a dry year going into it? I mean, did you guys no. kind of get an idea? <laughs> did you? We, I, mean, I mean, no, I mean, we didn't know, but I mean, you can see the weather. I mean, do we have any kind of, uh, you know, any ways to, get water on these situ these places knowing yeah. that so many thousands of people are going to duck hunt yeah we did and, and our rest areas follow a um, every year we kind of lay out a plan for flooding right. them uh, we have less uh, less water on demand capacity across all of our managed acres than probably what people think we have all right um, rest areas we've been working a lot over the past 10 to 15 years to increase that water on demand capacity but if that water comes from a ditch that has to fill up with runoff, it's, I mean, a ask a farmer out there on the landscape what water they had to flood up a rice field this November. Yeah. Right. They didn't have it unless yeah. they use groundwater. And we're not, gonna, we're not gonna contribute to groundwater reduction across the Delta or anywhere else. So we're not gonna use groundwater <coughs> largely. Um, nobody had water to flood generally in <laughs> November, but we followed a plan. I mean, Hollowell and Rape were flooded according to our schedule this year. I don't have those exact dates in front of me right now but yeah they were flooded right on schedule um uh phenomenal habitat down at hollowell this year um and and rape you know we got a, a couple people commented this year and sent some pictures in and said yeah there's no ducks there's no water and it's like well there's only one rape's got a gate and then a long road that goes all the way back of it the public i mean after november 1st there's no access to that right, area so there's right. no way to, there's no way to take a picture of 90% of rape plantation in the winter, or even see ducks on rape plantation, 90%, I mean, you just can't see it because it's behind a locked gate. So, and Hollowell is a similar situation. Most of the duck use on Hollowell is back in the north and west corner now, which is every, that's almost, a, that place is almost a full section. So it's pretty much a mile from the parking lot and the observation tower and the camps right there. It's almost a mile back to where most of the ducks use these days. So, uh, Duck use varies on those areas like it does on, vary on every area um, mm -hmm. where a duck lands anywhere across their range. Uh, but we we see very good duck use of those areas. Um, we're going next year. We're going to start. There's a there's a guy working on some research in Missouri right now who's using he's he's got a formalized way to do use drones to count ducks across some of these areas. So the next year. New waterfowl biologist. He's going to be working on a systematic way to conduct duck surveys across some kind of hot spot areas. We call them. So not the surveys we do now are are intended and they provide a landscape scale estimate. We're going to be working I mean, I mean, hot spots. Though I mean, are you doing these surveys for what purpose? I mean, are you trying to 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 count the ducks? Or are you trying to which which ones? I mean, I mean any of them. I mean, I mean like oh yeah. Okay, so I mean, so you guys are constantly focused on uh, counting the ducks, making sure the duck population's up, or improving the the uh, the, the areas for to hold more ducks, or I mean, 
I mean, obviously there's an issue. I mean, right, guys? I mean, you guys are seeing there's, decline there's of ducks. Issue, I mean, everywhere. I mean, help me out of, here. One of my questions is, too, also is, such as uh, a rest area, a, a duck holding area, which I've known since I was nine, ten years old, um, long enough to hunt, uh, it, it just astounds me that there's no water period uh, was neglected to the point that they had to jump through somebody's tail ends to get out there and put pumps in there to put water in it. And where was this that, at, That's very, very crucial to hold ducks. That's like ash ball. Um, it's kind of sad. The fishermen even couldn't even catch fish. It was bare desolate. I yeah, mean, yeah, they're doing something like that. It, it was Conway pitiful. Um, yeah. I don't know. Don't understand. I, I just know what it was, where it was. And I know how empirical it is to the ducks uh, on Dave Donaldson there and the rest area below it, or should I say north of it. Um, no water there through to the second split. I understand you have no water, no rain. We have a dry year for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, my I mean, opinion is, in my opinion, there's other resolutions for everybody. And that's where I stand with it. Um, they wanted to fix the overcrowding problem on the WMAs. Am I correct? A couple, three, three years ago, four years ago, they gave them 30 days of duck season. Okay. No water. November the 15th, they're going to start flooding. The first week of duck season, who they allow pile in there? Everybody. No water. Where do they go? To the WMAs. That's a safety issue. You got 50 people in one duck hole. I, that, I mean, can, that can be resolved. I mean, you know, that's something else we've heard, too. There was this lack of water, and where there was, was water... It, yeah. They were yeah. piled up in there. I've heard that a lot, too. I mean, on the opening day of season, I heard that one hole had over 100 guns in it, and they were arguing. Yes, sir. I mean, it, that you know, that's crazy. I mean, that's know? just things we would love to be able to even give input and put back towards you guys. The Arkansas Game of Fish do help. We're yeah. not here. We're not nobody's enemy. We've been, I've hunted this place since I was 10 years old, and I will tell you straight up honestly, I have seen nothing – Arkansas Game and Fish has done to make my hunting or anybody else's better or I, the fishermen better in 20 years. Well, I just think that the sport's growing so fast. I mean, that's right. That's it's growing thing. so fast. Uh, that, yeah, and it might be. It's it going might be a couple phases. It might be a little bit of a, a, a growing pains, you know. And that's that's kind of what you know. Like Frank said, his biggest concerns is overcrowding and getting mm -hmm. too many guns in a hole. I know, cause you know he'll be down there. There'll be a lot to go. You know, one reason why I don't duck hunt as much as I used to is because I don't want to go reason. out. I don't want to go out there and get in a hole with 50 guns and talk about boats all day long, right? You know, so I like to go in there with a little smaller crowd, but you just can't when there's a limited amount of water, you know, everybody. Because these guys are going to go duck hunting, right? Yeah. They're going to buy their tags. And, and really, you know, we, you know, we was talking earlier, you know, no matter how – Dry things are. The outstaters gonna still come in. They want to witness. Hunt. They want to witness yeah. the flooded timber adventure. You know, especially in Arkansas. You know, that's what we're known for. You know, so you know, no matter what, you know, no matter if there's water, no water, these guys are still going to come. But you know, why not give them a good experience and, and, and figure out what is really going on with the water situation and the ducks? Uh, because you got anything to say about that? Uh, yeah, like I said, it was a dry year. Yeah, it was a really dry it, year. It does rain. And sure. by, by me, it has the rain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. no pumps. You don't pump it up. It has the mm -hmm. rain. So mm -hmm. that was a big problem there this year. Um, gonna, nothing anybody can do about that, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, I did notice we were held to a lower water level this year. Uh, third, third year of that. Third year. Mm -hmm. Yep, we announced that back in public meetings yeah. in 2021. I remember that. Yeah. What's the purpose? Like of well, yeah, what was the reason? What's, what's the, the reasoning that? behind that? Uh, we're holding them at lower water levels, and we've gone in ab at or above that water level and done forest management to to regenerate trees. To regenerate them, you got to mm -hmm. sink the water skill in the trees. Oh yeah, yeah it is in the spring. Yeah, yeah, spring when sure. they got leaves spring. on the trees. Not yeah. in the winter. Yeah, and the fall. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, is absolutely. So, so is the is dormancy that's been a question. I know there's some public meetings coming up. Uh, yeah. Actually, Saturday, uh, mm -hmm. well, there'll be one in Pocahontas, Pocahontas and one, yes. in, one in Jonesboro. Correct. Everybody yeah, needs to go. I figure yeah. you'll probably be there. Oh huh? yeah. Yeah. Yep. Be talking. Yep, definitely. But, 
So that was a question, uh, and it, it'll come up more, but the dormancy of the trees. Yeah. I know that's been, when is it? Yeah. When does the water affect them? When doesn't it? And so one resolution that they were talking about is uh, could, could season be pushed back? Uh, could there's a there's a kind of a wall there right if you look at our seasons and if you assume a 60 day season uh, and if it goes to January 31st I'm just throwing out a bunch of assumptions yes, right yeah. I mean so the er, and, like, and the feds just so everybody knows the feds are regulating that uh, the frameworks of it yeah it's a cooperative yep. thing between the feds and the flyway councils to determine what the frameworks and then that are. brings up another point could that be adjusted the frameworks yes sir. they were a few years ago yep they've been adjusted multiple times. And it used to be the Sunday closest to January 24th, then it was the last Sunday in January, then it moved to January 31st. Not Does that need ago. to be pushed back further? Should it go into February? No. No. There's a point where you got to let a duck be a duck. Yeah. And they need to get fat and happy and go back north if we Fair want up. more ducks. And so we hunting in February would be not, none of this stuff you can talk about in extremes like it's going to be the end of the world. But a duck's got to be a duck at yeah. some point and they've got to be able to use the habitat that's here at some point and february if hunting were to extend into february at some kind of uh, wide scale other than special hunts like youth hunts then uh, i think you'd start to see some issues with ducks trying to get fat and happy so on a personal more. level you think it'd be detrimental to the waterfowl to extend it on a yeah. biological level yeah, yeah like not, not my now. personal opinion but it's biology wise yeah. it's it's the later you go there's some there's some Studies way back in the late te- 1990s that showed if you break a pair bond among ducks that, that that hen's less successful when she goes on to nest. Things happening here have been shown. There's some more recent work that showed that it's kind of an early bird gets the worm yeah. um, reality with, with waterfowl. So they're trying to push the limits, at least, at least mallards and pintails. Uh, they're trying to push the limits. They're trying to be on the front of the snow line if there is one. And yeah. they're, they're trying to get up there first long everything we know about breeding ducks says if you get there first you're more successful you crank out more baby ducks yeah. um yeah. so and they do that by not breaking a pair bond and having to waste time reestablishing a pair bond in late winter or on, or on spring migration yeah. and so if they're fat and happy like what that means if they got a pair bond that hen is always in better body condition because a drake's being attentive like that drake is being alert while she can feed and not have to worry about predation competition from other ducks all that kind of stuff right so Massive study just completed up in Canada um, several years back clearly showed that that the better ducks that arrive early are the ones that do better and produce more ducks, which all of us as duck hunters should want. So, so yeah, it, the, the framework's been changed multiple times in yep. the last 15 years, I think. Um, so it's already, you know, it's bumped up to January 31st. So if you took 60 days, you're back to December 1st. Yeah. Right? That's the latest it could pop. Like, if you so, had 60 days of hunting, that would be Is that latest. something that might be looked at? pushing it maybe back to give you another week or two of dormancy yeah we've talked chances, about that you know we've, so. we've talked about that duck season dates are always they're always fascinating wasn't it on the agenda for like this year at one time though to be to a little in? bit a little bit later it was like uh saturday after thanksgiving i think yeah sure yeah so you'd have to think about multiple factors going to set in a duck season and if you did 60 days as late as possible there'd be no breaks in it yes sir. There, there'd be no splits in it it'd have to run straight through or you wouldn't hunt 60 days so the whole duck season setting is always a trade-off and a lot of folks it, it there's a lot of factors that go into it like we can only break the season twice it can only be 60 days it has to stop january <coughs> 31st there's lots of factors that, that play into exactly how you set a duck season and haven't done this for a Do long time. Do some of those factors, is it pressure and money from clubs losing the, the Thanksgiving holiday there for, for members and for paid guests and I wouldn't, for lodging? Yeah, and, I wouldn't exp- I mean, is that, say it as pressure. Is it, is it, there's, it's, there's essentially there's a group of folks. Um, there's a, there there's would a, be people very upset if y'all were to push and, and they lost Thanksgiving. Would you agree with? I mean, oh, I'm sure there, I'm sure there would. Yeah. yeah. And th- but there's a long tradition. There's, there's value in certain parts of the state where it's appropriate for that habitat or having early water for ducks. That that's important, right? And the further you push that back, you got to wonder about private lands, yep. flooding early water fields, for ducks. and and that's what's on, changed on with the us. habitats, oh, okay. all the yeah. habitats that can support it, which would be rice fields, moist soil fields, yeah. oxbows, bottom, you know, tupelo breaks, that kind of. That's we, where ducks historically would have come here early. And they we wouldn't, they wouldn't have been in the forest. We saw a lot of changes no. with that from the October. You don't 15th. even need to buy a duck stamp. 
till or hunt till after December, right? The timber. What's that? Right. Is that? He, I'm not, I'm not he, sure what he's you're saying. Asking. You you wouldn't even need to go out into the timber and hunt in the timber after until after December. Basically, the ducks aren't right. there. Yeah, so they're just not there. That what didn't you just say that? No, I said historically before any of us would have been here. Right. You think about when rainfall happened, when mm-hmm. acorns dropped, like all this stuff lines up. That right. mid December is when mallards would have come to Arkansas gotcha. in mass. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That's when trees would have been dormant. Sure. That's when water would have come. Overbank flooding would have happened. They would have been in like prairie wetlands on a like. Say a hurricane comes in and floods a bunch of perched wetlands on the Grand Prairie right. in October. That's where the ducks would have hung out. Now those are rice fields. Those are the habitats that can be flooded early to support right. ducks. I, I got see. you. I yeah, but it, all, it all lines into what these ducks. That, this is what they evolved to do over thousands of years before oh, we started yeah. coming in For here. Sure. Yeah. They were here. They weren't in bottom and hardwood forests until December, January, February. That, that's when they adapted to use these habitats. Yeah. As, as near as we and there's been a lot of changes. These rice fields, I mean, this used yep. to be, yeah. you saw it's the big, pictures of the that's timber. That's a massive change. I mean, that's, yeah. the timbers, a lot of it's gone, and there are some private, but uh, Arkansas Game and Fish owns the, or the people own the majority of the timber. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, percentage-wise. A lot of it, yeah, yeah. We got it. We so. can't underestimate the the private landowners who have kept that those forests and wetlands in, and intact Nash, as and, well. And, and, and refugees. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. You're exactly right. It, it's the ag landscape has a like at scale yeah. has a much bigger impact because it's a more massive land base, and we all have seen those changes over the past 20 years. Kind of the same time where where duck hunting has become another gone through another getting really popular phase yep. is the same time that the ability of those ag lands to provide habitat for ducks has declined. So, Bile to View, if, if I may ask, um, yep. you're familiar with Bile to View? Yep. So, um, with with the flooding of Bile to View back, uh, I think it was about eight, maybe eight, ten years ago, um, the the artificial, and some, the, what you'd say, artificially flooding of Bile to View um, that changed, right? Um, Arkansas Game and Fish pretty well said, you know, we can't flood it. Can't pump it. Cannot artificially pump it or right. flood it, right? Is well, that no, due, to the taking, due to right. taking of groundwater? You, you're not wanting Well, the, the, we had a lot of pumps across running places that would have to run for Shirey Bay. It, you open up Lake Charles and it's not, it, it takes every bit of 12 weeks to have any appreciable water in that place. Which is why the water the boards were being open October first or earlier yes, for sir. years and years and yeah. years and years. So the early no water should definitely help. There's been a big change because by the time it was huntable, you know, November twentieth ish each year, you would have water in there and, and ample ducks to hunt, you know. Yeah, but once, that's once that changed from the October fifteenth to the November fifteenth, that well it's dry. Yep, and that's the know, same time that was killing a whole bunch of trees. So. Yeah. Yep. There's yeah. absolutely no, and that's, the dormancy that's question. one thing that brings a lot of people back to this dormancy question yeah. and, and what you just said and and I, I have a passion for that too as Frank and a lot of other humber, hunters. You go back to this, the water's killing the trees, but to me the quickest way that I'm seeing trees killed is by chainsaws. Uh, not really. When we cut um, a few hundred acres out of three hundred thousand plus acres every year. That's a that's a drop in the hat. But what what is the reason of cutting those trees? Uh, to b- regenerate more trees. You talking about open, you talking about opening up a skyline? Or I mean, man, yeah. I, mean, I don't, I don't yep. get it. I don't get it. So uh, it's kind of like deer hunting, then. You know, mm-hmm. cut the trees. You know, grow some more weeds or whatever. You know, whatever, yeah. I, get, I get it. Um, but but cutting the trees. I mean, they didn't cut trees a long time ago. I mean, I, I don't understand that. You guys selling the trees? I mean, who, who's yeah. who's Okay. Where we can, mm-hmm. most of what most of what's on there is not high value merchantable timber. Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's fairly low value stuff. It's hollow trees. It's trees that are probably on their way to die anyway. Um, so it's it's a it's a variety of stuff. We've got long term plans that are um, part of uh, achieving desired forest conditions throughout bottom and hardwood forests. It's uh, some plans are just just revising that whole document right now, and that's a group of like six or seven states that uh, forestry experts have put together uh, to guide how forestry management is done, and we follow those guidelines. Actually, the, the, the work we've done here over the past 20 years are um, being taken into account in a major way in the new draft of that document because we've had so much success in regenerating red oaks, regenerating a diverse forest instead yeah. of just a closed canopy, understory of water tolerant, shade tolerant trees that are not highly. Every tree's got its place, 
But these trees, we've essentially got forests that are, are closed canopy, uh, red oaks and some other trees are dying. The understory is ash, maple, stuff that's not valuable for the long term. Uh, so we've gotten very active in trying to promote a more um, diverse forest that's beneficial to a whole lot of different species. I got you. With the natural resource of this timber, what Luke, what could you say to me if I was a private landowner and get some of these clubs that don't agree with the cutting the timber? What could you tell me? How could you convince them to cut their timber? We are, and private landowners are taking taking notice, and private landowners are starting to cut timber. Uh, the biggest loan, land ownership of timber right now is on wetland, wetland reserve program lands. There's almost 300,000 acres of that stuff that started getting planted, um, gosh, almost 30 years ago now. So we're actually working on trying to incentivize markets for those folks to start cutting timber on those WRP tracks that were replanted, uh, replanted by National uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service when folks sign up for those easements. So there's all, all of these efforts, we're trying to encourage our conservation incentive pilot program that's going on right now is trying to incentivize the same type of forest management we're doing on private lands. And there are private landowners starting to take note of this and starting to do it on their own properties. So if the trees were just left and you didn't cut them, and eventually a lifetime of a tree is however many hundred years, 150, whatever it is on these some of these oaks, eventually that tree will die mm -hmm. and it'll fall over. But you're talking about hundreds of years, though. Where there's water stress, though, the, the trees underneath it are not the same trees that are dying. It's a different tree. It's a different tree community that's in there already. So you have to do something unless you want it to die out and just have a green ash and sweet gum and hickory forest. Oh. That's what's coming on next. So you're saying they're not being replaced by the same trees. Absolutely, and that's because of water. So how much, all right, let me ask you, how much of the, how many acres of trees do you think y'all are planning on cutting? We cut, I have to dig up those numbers, under a under 1,000 acres last year. So that's how much I've cut now. You know, how much, yeah. how year, much are you planning yearly. on cutting? Yearly. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yearly? Yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, these <laughs> these are not high value sites that contractors are beating our door down to come do timber harvest. It, uh, and I think that brings up the question is some of these sites, you so know, and I know there's different contractors, but I mean, you see some of these timber tracks and they look destroyed. Yeah, I mean, you know? I, I and mean, those are questions that I'm have hearing, come in. I mean, I'm hearing from customers where they're, they're beating their lower units up and they're wrecking their boats and stuff like that because it's, it's just the, 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 the tracks aren't cleaned up. And I've seen that. I, I always, I'm always curious about those comments because you operate a boat through a forest that has a lot of wind throw trees that have just fallen over because yeah. they're water stress and die. Yeah. Well, I never hear anybody. Well, obviously the guy that hits. Her. The, obviously the guy <laughs> that hits the log doesn't want the trees cut. Yeah. So he has an agenda already. Yeah. So that's kind of an unfair comment. There's plenty of trees. There's plenty of trees falling over. I mean, over anyway. I mean that guy that's complaining yeah. about hitting I mean, his lower unit doesn't the, want the trees cut. So you already. I mean, one hundred percent. What's the what's 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 behind that? That's right. I mean, obviously the guy doesn't want the trees cut. You know or don't understand why the trees are being cut. And I think that's the biggest problem. It's like, we just don't know why the trees are being cut. And, and, and not only that, it's just convincing the people that you guys are right. You know, that's the problem. Maybe there's not enough information. Maybe there's not yeah, enough facts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean me and you just, talked about yeah, this. I mean, yeah. why are they cutting the trees? No, that's like, true. Like, yeah, hey, no, we don't get no ducks. And that yeah. may be it. You know, we don't get no ducks. Season's too late or too early. You know, you know, uh, it's natural for people to complain. And well, it is. I mean, know, when you've stood beside, you've yeah. stood in a duck hole and you've hunted, say you've hunted 10, 20 years. I know numbers. I've hunted this hole since I was a kid. You hear all that all the time. Say you've stood in a duck hole and you've, we go on a duck hunt and we have a great duck hunt. We stand by these trees. And then they come in and they log these trees. And that's gone. Like, my child will never see and stand by those trees again. They're gone. They're 100-year-old oak trees and they're gone. So I think it really resonates deep down inside these people. You know, this is a heritage, something they've done with their dads or granddads, and now it's it's gone. Well, they enjoy so, the experience of duck hunting. You and, know, this was uh, some of these holes, yeah, you know, or be popular, this right. or that. But and the trees it, are gone. They're not able to raise their children with the same experience as they experienced because, they're, you know, that 150-year-old tree is gone. And, and they won't see it again, right? No, it, it so, won't grow back in any of our life, kids' lifetimes. So it's just know? hard. I mean, I wish our organic it's, fish would understand that, um, you know, you know, reading a, you know, reading something off a piece of paper, reading stats, and reading a report doesn't mean that the public 
will take that in. And, you know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I wish they would do a better job of explaining it to people because you know they're the ones paying to go duck hunting. They're the ones doing all this stuff, and you know it's just like the local politics in Washington, right? You know, you just don't understand what's going on. I think the Arkansas people just don't understand what's going on. I think the Arkansas Deer Fish need to do a better job reaching out and talking to these people. Just like the reason why we have you here. You know, we thought this was important for us because we sell boats to our customers. If our customers don't want to go duck hunting, we can't sell boats, right? And we pump in $3.5 million on local economy, right? I mean, we put gas in these people's cars, we buy tires, we do everything. So duck hunting is not just about you or Arkansas Game and Fish. It's just about the whole economy and what it does for everybody. You know, there's families here that uh, that needs a job, you know. So, you know, next time everybody's sitting in a, in, a, in a table and they talk about cutting trees or cutting ducks, it's not necessarily what they're talking about. It's everybody in Arkansas that makes a dollar off of duck hunting and the families we feed and the Christmas gifts we buy, right? So it all revolves back into everything. And I think Arkansas Game and Fish, because I keep hearing all the time, and I'm not slamming nobody or throwing anybody under the bus, because we support Arkansas, Arkansas Fishing and Arkansas Game and Fish, right? Absolutely, yeah. You know, uh, uh, we've done over $150,000 of donations and also boats to marketing. You know, I'm sure you've done your homework. Yeah. We 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 put a lot of money into Arkansas Game Fish, and and we appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. We do. Luke. I yeah, mean, I, sure. I know some of the, and some of these questions are hard. I just, you, uh, you just know, another day at the office. I just, yeah, well, <laughs> but to, it it's it, it and it might be because you know that's that's your job, your profession. You get paid to yeah. do, but uh, these people are passionate about this. You know, yeah. I mean, there's people that. You know, when you take their trees or you, you know, you shut this or limit that, I mean, they take it personal. I mean, just have you, know, you, you and, and I feel like stuff. a lot of the people. And we can't. You yeah. know, just have a uh, just have yeah. a uh, have a walk through. Have a have a group of guys come. We have, we, we've invited people. You know, so the edge the we've edu had tours. We've had invited yeah. people out. Yeah. And the education shows up. side. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, that's, that's but but the, the problem is I've never gave up in life in anything I've ever done. Right. So if you guys if if you guys say hey I've done this I've done this and nobody just shows up well you guys need to try harder. I you didn't know, say we weren't doing it again. I mean, that's I what we do. People I mean, didn't show but, up. but 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 that's yeah. not an ex that's not an excuse for failure. So you know uh, we work hard to build the most elite boat on the water, and, we, and so you know we never gave up on anything we do in life. You know, and, and so you know I was excited to have you a part of this because you know, we we just want to hear your your your. Uh, you know, reasoning and, and how can we make our customers feel better? You know, we stand for our customers. We we build boats for them, and you know, we're here for them, and we want to make your job easier. Okay, so we want to get you out here and say, hey guys, this is why we're cutting the trees. Hey, this is why we're doing this, and and, and we can talk to our customers, you know, this way. Just get everybody on the same page. Get everybody well, on the same it's, page. I want I want to I want to back up a second. So uh, giving up is. Absolutely not what we're doing. Exactly. Um, I was hoping you'd say that. Not at all. Right. Um, if the easiest thing we could possibly do as a state employee meet, meet some people's um, notions about what a state employee is, the easiest thing we could do is do nothing. Yep. Mm, never cut a right. tree, never renovate a wetland, yep. never do a GTR project. That would be the easiest possible thing we could do as that a state employee. That would definitely be the laziest thing to do. Absolutely. It'd be the easiest. And the cheapest. Absolutely. Cheap. We, the could cheapest. Do, we could just collect a paycheck and then retire. So, right. so the beavers. Let's go to the beavers. Do we want to talk about dormancy? Can we get back? Do we, can we get, are we going to come back to the dormancy question? Oh, no, go ahead. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, do, I'll talk about whatever. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the trees, I mean, I hear the trees all the time. That's probably I the mean, number one trees thing I hear. All the time. It is water, yeah. trees. Trees. I mean, where's the water trees? trees? You know, uh, are they making tons of money of cutting timber? You know, you no, hear all these rumors. Definitely you know? not. You know? Well, you know, that's what people, the thing is. People think that. People if think they don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Even if they do know what you're doing, they don't know why you're doing it. You know, uh, and that's what that's, that's we want funny, to talk man. about the sales tax. We want to talk about the sales tax. We want to talk about the uh, cutting the trees. I mean, people uh, assume Arkansas Game and Fish is just we, the yeah, biggest, please. wealthiest organization in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's what people see. People yeah. hear that. You know and what I mean? And so, so. It might be our dot. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. But I don't know either. No, it, I mean, I mean that's what we us. hear. I mean, we hear it all us. the time. I mean, I mean, we're talking to the customers to buy the belts to hunt every day of the season. We are attached to the most dominant duck hunters in Arkansas. Yeah. These guys yeah. love this stuff, right? They do. They, they tell us yeah. what you know what they're experiencing. We're just telling you the truth. I mean, these are yeah. sixty-day hunters here. Yeah, these, these mean, guys at this table. I mean, they hunt every single day of the season. You know, you know, Havoc's gotten where it's had us gotten to date. 
quality in the product is because we sell to the most extremist duck hunters. And you know, and, and you know, and, you know, when they come back to us and say, "Hey, you know, we're having struggles with ducks. We're having this and whatever," you know, we're just telling you the truth. No, you know, yeah, we, we're just we, telling you the truth. And that's what we that's what we do too. So we've got information about what we do with forest management, why we do it, all yeah. of, all on our website. We've done multiple press releases. We we get push out stuff through social media. Um, you know, we we continually um, every like one thing I've learned for sure, like business, private sector, um, government. Like everybody can do better at communication. That that's just a. I know that's kind of like. Amen. A, a oh duh, yeah. 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 I, 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 no, no, I agree one hundred percent. Always do better. Yep. But we, we we're continually trying to find more. Uh, I mean, not more better ways to to get information out to people. Mm-hmm. People way people consume information changes all the time, and that's that's not. We experienced yeah, that too. Oh, I know you guys. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I like mean, when you too. started, the way you communicate people is yeah. probably way different than it is today. I mean, it's tough. And it's tough. I mean, some it, people, some people just take a lot of people don't their have patience. Opinion. A lot of yeah, people don't have patience that. now. Everybody's uh, impulsive, you know. So they might read something and only barely read the surface of it. It's a, it's a 144 character world, right? So mm-hmm. you can't. It's tough to explain why you're doing something complicated with habitat management. 144 characters. Right? Is duck hunting going to get better? So, <laughs> is we, it going to get better? Know. Man, this is a, what they want to know, as man. As a duck hunter, I hope I mean, so. But, but I think, I mean, you're yeah. the man of the, you know, you're the man of the hour right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, is it going to get better? Do yeah, we? I mean, yeah. And so, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of folks. So, we're in a situation now where I can talk like an old guy, get on my lawn, but, but it's. A duck hunting's duck populations have been high for a long time. Yeah. And they're going down. But why and are they going down? And, and, and breeding population and, and is changes. Somebody, and is, is, is somebody making adjustments? You know, drought in the prairies. Well, I mean, I can run out of paint one day, but I make adjustments to get my numbers. You can't make it rain across millions and millions of acres of prairie pottle well, region. I might be. I might be. A, well, you might have a valid Kim, point. Kim, Kim trails. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> So it so, sounds like, sound like Arsenal Game Fish can get out there and do uh, well, rain dances, huh? One thing you, you can encourage people to do, go, go check out what's going on in the Prairie Pottle region. <laughs> if you got an airplane, go fly it up there. Yeah. And you'll keep going and going and going and going, and you won't reach the end of it. You think the Delta's big? think South Dakota's big? Go kick around the prairies of Saskatchewan for a week. Mm-hmm. It's massive. It is massive. There are no wetland protection laws in place in Saskatchewan. In Prairie Canada at all, there's there's nothing to to keep wetlands as wetlands up there, and habitat loss is real. Conservation reserve program CRP lands in North and South Dakota have declined massively over 20 years, and it now looks like we're actually moving toward a long-term drought. And the really smart guys working on this back in the 1950s said it's good old H2O, man. That's what drives duck populations. And most duck hunters around today don't. Like, we have not had something below a 50-day season since 1995. Think about that. Yeah. And think about your customer base, who you hear from. <clears throat> and this is, like, those are the those folks are the future of duck hunting. So I absolutely care about what they think so, and what their opinion. But, yeah. but we got to provide some context. This is us. Yeah. And all of us need to provide context to folks that we've had high duck populations for a long time. And we have not had these low populations that led to 30 day seasons, the point system. I got addicted to duck hunting where if I shot one hen mallard, I was done. I How many, too. Ha, you did. I know. Yeah, I'm, but I mean, a lot of people. Why isn't it changing then? Why aren't you <clears throat> well, go back duck to, season? Why aren't you dropping when the, the limit? When the populations drop to a point that oh, that is necessary. So is there a certain, is there a certain number set? Like when, yeah, yeah. when, when the feds see this, we'll do this. Yeah. I it's mean, all within that, the adaptive harvest management protocol. And then There's it'll a whole be matrix in there. It's shrink, like, shrink days. Yep. One hand. How close are we one, getting? I ran, well, walk through this a little bit with the commission last month over lunch. And so I don't predict this kind of stuff because we're trying to predict rain, right? Like we talked about. Well, in the we fall, need to do right? something, rain dances or something. Right? It's a, uh, Turtle, it's turtle. it's close, but we would take so the last two years we've had a fifteen percent drop year over year in, in mallard populations. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent one year, and then fifty percent the next year. So that's, a, that's a that's, that's a big. rapid drop. It is half the population that was counted in twenty sixteen. 
<clears throat> think about that for a minute. Half the total number of mallards across the mid-continent. So why didn't we make any adjustments knowing that you did that in 2016? Why didn't we make any adjustments? It's because it's bad money, huh? Is it about money? No. no. Okay. It, because what we know also about duck populations is that harvest isn't the biggest factor driving those populations. Okay. It's, it's water on the prairies. That's it. That's the primary thing that drives them. It's habitat. It's breeding potential. Thousands of miles. So reducing the limits and making adjustments, it wouldn't have um, improved the following year in duck season, or not likely. No. Going back to one hen, not likely. Yeah. Yeah. but when back the number to one hen I mean, ten I years ago, that's the thing. I mean, why I see, wouldn't it though? We I don't mean. see any hens hardly anymore because no. it wouldn't. Have, well, production has been very, very poor for several years, and we've got some cameras in the woods right now watching these areas mm -hmm. where ducks are hanging out, and yep. it's seven to one. The oh, that's that's typical this time of year because hens are already moving the front of the migration. Really, it's unpaired drakes that are hanging out down here hoping they can find a hen. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's common for drakes to lead in the fall and tail in the. Can you also tell us why buck deer disappear? Our three year and a half year olds. I would like to know that. I mean, why do our four and a half year old deer disappear? <laughs> if you figure that out, please tell me. Well, I figure you knew that. I mean, I, I, I don't know that one because. I mean, uh, so here yeah, in South I, Arkansas, you got yeah. all these pine, uh, pine plantations, right? Yeah. Rows and rows and acres, tons of them, and. You have all these pine thickets, Can you see, yeah. and you will not find a deer over three and a half years old. I mean, look anywhere. I, I got a I got <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> I'm talking got, about where are they at down here? I, I mean, you have to leave. You have to. They go underground, right? You have to I leave. Don't, here I don't know where it is to go kill one. I live in Dallas. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where they go. I know Dallas County's deer. They ain't very good. You no, they got to go somewhere else. What about what? the bass fishing? The bass fishing is terrible too, North. So, it just is. I mean, I mean. I, it seems like you go so, anywhere else in the United States. So you go something. to Texas mostly when you go bass fishing. Yes. Right? Yeah. And they got a lunker program down there. It's pretty awesome. Do we do we have anything here in Arkansas? <laughs> Did you say that's lunker? anything for like anglers well, related? Is. Like catching big What's bass, that? trophy bass. Lunkers. 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 Um, Lunkers. So Lunkers. 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 in Texas, Lunkers. 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 we're getting started, right? We're working on starting that now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Are you really serious? Yeah, yeah. Texas has a rolling. That's outside. Texas has a really good program. I want to be clear. That's outside. You get me in the things where I'm talking out of turn. It's okay. I don't run the fishery side of things. I mean, we're not going to hold you anything. Oh, yeah, you will. I know how this works. Oh, you said you So, yeah, the fishery side of things, there's, I hear, you know, in. Yeah. Look, I just hear conversations about people talking. At least it's being matter. talked about. Somebody caught like a 10-pound bass. Like that's narrowed it down. But like so, just a couple of days ago in the yeah. office, somebody was talking about a – somebody came in. We got a couple of people in our office do a lot of bass fishing. Somebody talked – I don't know where it was, who it was, yeah. when it was. Well, you see the – 10-pound bass, maybe Lake Burr or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. Somebody's going to shoot me for naming a lake. But, but And everybody will go Asian, there. Didn't I, I, you name a place and everybody <laughs> yeah. gets mad at you. But, yeah. but you know, when you see the uh, tournaments, you know, they got low bag limit. I mean, the 14 pounds, 12 pounds bag, five fish, you know. Then you go somewhere else and they're in the high 20s, you know. So, obviously, if the professionals can't catch a big bag, we can't catch a big bag. Well, I, and, and I'm not going to argue with that. I'm just – I want to sort, sort of make light of it in the sen only in the sense that everywhere I've ever gone as a professional in this field, if you go to one state, if you go around us, they'll say Arkansas has got it good. And if yeah. you're in Arkansas, they'll say Louisiana's got it good. I know for a fact, my man, they don't say that about turkey hunting. In Arkansas. <laughs> I say that I know for they a fact. Don't. Nobody <laughs> says turkey hunting is good in Arkansas, guys. That I don't care either. Uh, nobody <laughs> out there. No, no, no. That or is, the that duck is an outlier. <laughs> no. Turkey yeah, hunting hunt is not good. Not good in Arkansas. I mean. Or the duck hunting. Well, duck hunting is it was, I mean, it's, it's going to get better, Frank. I yeah. mean, do you honestly, I mean, I know you're talking about us going into more of a permanent drought, like a long-term drought. Um, in the, so in the you, prairies, yeah. Which is going to cause just more decrease in ducks, right? Yep. Is what you're expecting. Yep. So you don't see it getting better anytime soon. No, I'm not a predictor because we've done, I've been here in Arkansas 18 years and dealing with duck stuff for a long time. And every time you say, yeah, man, it's about to be a drought on the prairies, you're wrong. Because typically, like if you look back to 1955, yeah. since these sur when these surveys started, the longest survey, running survey, organized survey of wildlife in the world. And you go back, and it's like a 20-year cycle. Drought, flood, drought, flood. And that's good, because a drought rejuvenates the wetlands. And what happened in the late 1990s when duck hunting got cool, and we went to 60-day seasons, robo-duck came on the scene, everybody could kill a duck on a, on a parking lot anywhere. You could probably put one out here on the highway oh, oh and yeah. kill a limited mallard yeah. in 1999, right? No doubt, no doubt. And it was the greatest production year we've had 
the highest harvest year was around then or 2000. Hunter numbers lagged a little bit yep. because it, 99 was better and then higher duck hunter numbers came in 2000, 2001, a little bit more. They, they jumped, but we came out of a long-term drought and that started in 1995 and started an increase and production on the prairies was insane. Like we're, we're there was this massive production of young ducks. And as, no matter how long you've been hunting or how good a duck hunter we all think we are, young ducks, young geese, they all make us look like experts because they're yes, the sir. vulnerable ones that lead to better harvest, right? And that's what happened through the late 1990s. And a whole lot of folks probably came in and had their, their perception of reality was calibrated in those years. Like this is duck hunting. When there's young ducks everywhere, there's water, like it's crazy Substantially easy. easier. Yeah, and so a lot of people's, a lot of this is all about, it's just human psychology, right? Which I'm no expert on, but a lot of people's expectations the, were benchmarked during those times. Yeah, it's kind of like the low interest rates back then, yep. back then, and now the yeah. hikes, yep. you know. Yep. So we're, but we're, if you look back in the 80s, it's you know, not crazy. it was the same rate. interest yeah. rate. It was the same interest yeah. rate. I, I, right. get, I get yep. that. It yep. makes perfect that sense. Yeah. Makes sense. People are definitely used to lower interest rates. Now they get like 7 8%. So they're, they're almost they think it's the end of the world. And, and if I don't, you look back in the 80s, it was that. And I don't want to sound like that. that's – because some people sit up here, like, ah, oh, these young kids. Yeah, ah, oh, man, they don't know what they're doing. Man, that's – like, if we had that kind of attitude at Arkansas Game of Fish, we'd have problems because that's yeah. the future of everything we yep. all do, right? It's your that's future right. customer, right. and it's our future constituent, current yeah. and future constituent. Yeah. We can't write these people off at all, but we, we do have to have honest conversations about, hey, guess what? You probably started duck hunting yeah. in the when best was, time that we've seen in 50 years. I mean, I, I get that because, you know, when Brian's telling me, he calls me and says, oh, it was terrible today, terrible today. <laughs> and I said, you know, Brian, I had a bad deer season last year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I try to stay positive. Well, and it makes sense, too. Easy. I mean, you, No, it's not easy. It's not easy. I just wish we had a better deer in Arkansas. I mean, my, I just wish we had a better deer. Better deer. I mean, better. a 120 is not very good, you know what I'm saying? Well, you got high dark deer density down here, and everything we know about that, high deer density doesn't create big what deer. Do y'all, I mean, yeah, what's the plan on that? What are y'all going to do about for us shoot to more of them? Yeah, but nobody wants to shoot those. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you then, because we can't go out and shoot them. I yeah. feel like you could change it. You should have to shoot so many well, does What were you about to say, guys? I have the opposite problem. We don't have any does. So you're in my deer. It's 20 minutes from here. See, See, down we, here, you can drive and home in the It's probably the evening. only place I've ever hunted in South Arkansas where there's no does. You know, you used, used all to. all over here on their place. Yeah, you, you can to, drive. You, know, you see 20 a day. Oh, you can drive 30 you know? minutes in and the I, evening right when, it, right when the sun goes down from here and go to, like, Hampton, yeah. and you will see 30, 40 deer on the side of the road. All right. those. Yeah. yeah. I think the Arkansas game fish needs it's to do something, do something about the coyotes and the bobcats, too, for turkeys. I mean, they need to do something. I mean, they – we got a really sh- bad turkey deal going on in our uh, Turkey's hurting for sure. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, hey, turkey, I'm a, tur- I'm a turkey bad. hunter. I know. Uh, it's, uh, bad. And we're, we'll see what this uh, – so the, the same stuff, I mean, weather conditions here are not really tied to the breeding grounds for ducks. But, you know, we've had after 10 years probably yeah. of a lot of April, May, June rains. Yeah. In the last three, not real bad on those spring rains, which is good for a ground nesting bird like a yeah. turkey. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah. we're hopeful that that's moving in a better direction because of the lack, of, a little bit drier springs, better production, yeah. um, and that that's another thing, right? People came in. There's got to be somebody go back a lot smarter than me. Go back and look at all this stuff about how all these different game populations kind of boomed in the late 1990s. And look at all the people who came on the hunting season and started participating yeah. in the late 1990s, right? And turkey, right. turkeys were booming because we know when you stock something new into a new area, they overshoot carrying capacity. They, they run past it. Like, yeah. here's, what, here's what should exist on this landscape. And as soon as you stock something in, they'll almost always run past it. They'll overshoot it, yeah. which stocked turkeys in the 80s and 90s clearly did. They shot past what the landscape can actually contain. I mean, and, yeah. and, and t- you all know turkey hunting got crazy popular too, right? Yeah. yeah. Right during the same time frame. It did. But, you know, uh, Cuz, you know, he's a turkey killing fool over there. He kills, he makes us look really bad. But, you know. Check, checks them all, by the why? way. Why? That's good. Well, well, not in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not I mean, that many to check. Right? Yeah, it's not many. No, I mean, he no. kills He kills a bird in Arkansas. No more than two. Like, he kills a bird he, in Arkansas. He's, he's a stud. He's, he's not on the enforcement side, just letting everyone know. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. They, might, yeah. They, they might be listening. I don't know. But, 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 Let's talk about turkeys because 
I mean, would it not help to move the turkey season up a little bit? Come on. I, was, I mean, um, use, the use season is like the best. It might help you kill one. It helps well, that's kill what one. we're trying it to do, people. <laughs> we're trying to kill turkeys. <laughs> we buy our lives. We try to kill turkeys. We try to kill deer. I think we try to catch fish. And we want to kill ducks. I think I mean, you're this hijacking is, this. No, this is what this is you're trying about. to kill a turkey in Arkansas. Well, <laughs> listen. It is tough. I want to go out there. And it's I want very to, tough. I want, to go, yeah, I, know. I want to go out there and it's experience tough. a good time yeah. in everything we do. I love the outdoors. Right. And I want to kill a turkey. I want to kill a good deer. I want to kill a ducks. I want to kill. I want to catch big fish. I mean, that's what this is all about. And if you can't do that, it's Game and Fish's fault. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're right. absolutely. Yep. Okay. Well, I mean, somebody has to take the fall for it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The whole, yeah. The whole yeah. country is suffering with turkeys right now. Yeah. I know it. I know. You think so? I'm just playing. No. I'm just playing. But oh, man. you know, I'm glad you said that, cuz, because it's funny. That's another thing when I mention every state's well, better is. somewhere else. Yeah. Like for a while, I sat here and as a Kansas native, right? And and my I had my cousin. He and I were the same age. He one of them grew up on the farm. He's five months older than me. We went through the wildlife program at K State together, right. Right? right? And he's working in the wildlife field in Kansas. And the Kansas turkey biologist for a long time is a guy we used to drink beer and eat chicken wings with in, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And and so we had a lot of conversations about this. And it's funny, you sit here and it's like, man, it's just Arkansas's turkeys are crashing, they're crashing, they're crashing. And meanwhile, the Arkies, as they affectionately call them in other mm -hmm. states, um, I mean, the mass migrations, right, north and west. Mm -hmm. I participated in that. Mm -hmm. And... And they're sitting there in Kansas and Nebraska and Missouri thinking, yeah, same thing's happening here. Well, it's yeah. going like this. It's crashing so, everywhere. As a non-resident in Kansas this year, you have to apply yeah. for a lottery tag. I know, I did. I, I, know, I, did I mean, I already did it. Yeah, yeah, already, yeah, yeah I already well. did it. You know, we got tags in Nebraska. I mean, I, trust me, we, go, we had to buy them. Yeah, for, yeah we uh, had to buy tags in Nebraska. You right, know? Yeah. I did it too. Yeah, we yeah, see. Yeah. I mean, we're hunting everywhere. I'm a lifetime license holder in Kansas. The best gift my parents ever gave me was yeah, when sure. I turned 16 or 18, they bought me a lifetime license in Kansas. Oh like 200 bucks. That tells you. There's still states you can buy non-resident lifetime. Hey, I don't want to be that guy, but if you're buying lifetime license, Somewhere else you work for Arkansas, we got a problem. That's a long time ago. We, I, I know, I know, but that still, you know, I'm not, not like, going to tell you how old I am. That's, like, that's like telling people I fish out of a glass boat, you know what I'm saying? But Luke, <laughs> Luke's grandfathered in. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. That's a, that was a long, like, that's, that's, that's been a long time since they uh, bought me that I, license. I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> long time. But, but, yeah, but because sure. you don't think. I've been hunting Kansas 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. Turkey hunting. It's, 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 it's yeah. It's, it's crazy. One turkey now. Oh, yeah. Like, Nebraska, ten, five years ago, they were sending emails, seemed like every other week, come shoot our three turkeys. It's the best they anywhere. Were. They were. And now it's crickets, right? So well, they're changing because, their... Because, I mean... They're a lot changing of, their lot limit, of, right? They're, yeah, they're changing they, the amount of birds you can shoot. Yeah, they right? did. Yeah, they did that. What happened was yeah. when... No, all the Arkansas people went to Kansas. That's and killed what all happened. Birds. Yeah, I mean, that's it, what happens. It's Arkansas's fault again. When the season... Well, when we the, had to do something. Yeah, can't I mean, kill the Arkansas. Obviously, it's Arkansas's fault again you because we don't got no turkeys. You know what I'm sure, saying? Exactly. Probably Game and Fish bought their licenses for them to send them up there, right? I, I, whatever yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. a lot of Arkansas went to Kansas oh, to kill birds. We did it. You did it. We all did it. And guess what happened, guys? There ain't no birds left in Kansas. When I started going, you would not see a hunter. You know? So Kansas ought to be... You got in the early side of it. That's right, I did. Then my cousin, a few years later, like probably in 2010, probably 2015 era, he was managing a, a, a Neosho Wildlife Area in Melbourne Wildlife Area in Southeast Kansas, and he said, opening weekend up here, it's just all Arkansas plates. And it's just, <laughs> it is. It's a funny conversation we have. Yeah, the Sim staters. I back right. you. <laughs> you I always, I always you back you. Oozers. All, those all these Similar. oozers. The same There's conversations oozers. happen everywhere. I just want to let you know. They <laughs> oh, all I know. Happen everywhere. Are they all oh. piled in one spot? Hey, we, hey, we yes. know that. We deer hunted <laughs> Illinois this year. and All over? Oh, oh yeah. And we we seen some guys yeah. on Facebook talking about us. Yeah. Well, our our yeah. truck took a picture of our license. We're place. like, wait a minute. That's our truck. I mean. I'm like, look, guys, I know we're oozers. You guys come to Arkansas and kill our ducks, okay? Kill well, our ducks. I wouldn't say that, but anyway, they're hunting them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I believe that's a little bit everywhere. It, I is, think it is everywhere. As far yeah. as the Arkansas stuff goes, I think either people don't know the, the reason why. I think that's yep. what's bothering us. Is yeah. We need to do a better job of letting the, the people know why the timber is being cut. Why is this not flooded? Why is this not flooded? Because they just assume the worst. I would, I would, the thing you, everyone, I'd say this to anybody we talk to with any kind of, uh, any kind of connections to folks like y'all have, you yeah. know, when we, when we put out messages from our, uh, 
from our agency about why we're doing what we're doing when we're doing it all that kind of yeah. stuff i would I, we would welcome the help from anyone to push that out to a broader audience yeah but we don't uh, mind helping that too um we don't mind helping you do that you know if i gain a fish we, and all these platforms we support them we love we love the hunting fish okay don't get us wrong hey, I know. Uh, yeah. you know right we love the you. hunt we oh, love yeah. the hunting fish we just would like yeah. to see a little bit more love and care you know, and explain reason why things are happening, and try to grow bigger deer and catch more fish. And, and it is hard because turkeys. It, it, Donald, turkeys. Donald, Donald, remember that little rabbits. that that lady that worked for Donald Trump in the White House? I'm not worried about the rabbits. She she made the best <laughs> comment ever that What's goes that? along with this. What lady? In the she said, "I can explain it to y'all, but I can't make you comprehend it." Well, that's so true. I mean, we deal with it every day. It's pretty day. strong. Like yeah. you can't it's, buy a five fifty weighing three hundred fifty yes. pounds. I get it. Yes. That guy thinks it's okay. Yeah. You know, but it's no, not. It, I, the boat just won't run, right, Frank? I know. It won't it's, run. It's a, no. it's a, I mean, look at Quentin last year. He ran sideways. He was on an eight degree V, but it was actually on a flat bottom. <laughs> he yeah. was. Yeah. We heard that last year. We, 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 so just, we just education. It's a constant, cha- it's it's just, a constant it, it, challenge. And it is. Yeah. It's and that is not, a, not an excuse at yep. all. It's just a yep. matter of, like, you con- we have, and we do, we, we keep trying to edu- put information out there and like we talked about earlier the whole how people take in information how people read past the first sentence or mm-hmm. don't or don't makes a big difference in how you communicate with folks yeah. and not saying we've always gotten it right at all yeah. uh, but trying to trying to just do that why talk to people about why we're doing things we're i know it's tough to see out there i i, I hunted on a, on a permit gun hunt at biomeda this year and I, on purpose, went through a spot that we've done some active active timber management on. Um, parts of it, you know, it's kind of like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Parts of it were like, man, this this looks like a lot. But I under, but I also understand why. I'm, I'm seeing things there that I never – I've walked through that area quite a bit over the years and walked through it and like, man, I never knew that there was this patch. For some reason, there was this patch of willow oaks that were 10 to 20 feet high, and now we've released those to become the next forest. Yes. And – we're we and they wouldn't have they wouldn't at some point they would have gotten beat out generally by other species if we hadn't have done what we did and and it's hard to see sometimes but we've got to think in the long term my, my message to a lot of folks these days is hey we're we are doing things to try to produce a forest that i will never hunt over like this has nothing to do with benefiting me it's long term at all, like I, I don't. Yeah. I'm not going to get any personal benefit. Like I said earlier. I mean, do you tell people that? Do you yeah. tell people the reason why? Yeah. So look, if we don't do this, this is what's going to be mm-hmm. in in, in, yes. in 100 years. Yes. So you gotta show them pictures. Show we're, them pictures. Where I was talking to our guy on the way down today about yeah. it, getting ready for our meeting on Saturday, yeah, yeah. The, talking about the forest composition yeah. at, at Black River, for example, and and talking about what's going on there and how, you know, it looks like there's. If you look at the the adult trees, right, the overstory, it may paint a picture like, yeah, you know, it's kind of they're all kind of in a, in bad shape out here, which is true. But if you look at what the next forest is coming in, there's probably a pretty big difference there. That the next forest within GTRs is not an oak forest. You've got more of a chance to get the next forest outside GTRs may already be more of an oak forest, if that makes sense, because and, of just different. And right there, where you're at, one of the questions on here was why, and and I mean. I've kind of known the answer to, but one of the questions that come in is why the emphasis is on oaks regenerating. Yeah, Th- that's a question that's come in. So yeah, what, I mean, so, we, so we try. Why, why are we? Why is that bring? I mean, food. The food, easiest so, answer, anyway. which is, I mean, it's the easiest, but some people kind of look at you cross-eyed, <laughs> is that it's like we're trying to produce the forest that's that should be on that site. Yes, sir. right. So there's yep. really smart people that aren't me that go in and look at like what's the soils on this area what's the hydrology what's the landscape position you look way back when the mississippi river used to be i mean the white the black the cast they're all the old mississippi river channels and so they could produce all these different cuts and soil types and all that you look at all that stuff and you come up with something called potential potential natural vegetation this is the community that should be there and this is a guy he got inducted in the arkansas outdoor hall of fame last year tom Foti. He was at the leading edge of all of this stuff, and he's working with us to say, okay, what should be on this spot? We're not putting a red oak on a white oak or cypress site. That's ridiculous. We're, we're not going to do that. Uh, but, but because of, of different hydrology and GTR management in some cases, um, where those forests should and shouldn't be has changed. Like there, there's some places where you're just not going to regenerate 
a red oak now where it should have been a red oak all things like take it back to natural nothing's natural anymore let's just move past that but no, no, nothing, nothing, it, nothing is so we're trying to regenerate the forest that should be there yep and most of those are a diverse forest with a high amount of red oaks in them so those red oaks also provide resources that a white oak forest an ash forest an elm forest don't provide yeah diversity that's the yep. key we're trying to manage and it's for. not just focused on and that's i think that's another part of it it's not just focused on waterfowl you know that area is for deer no. that could yeah, be yeah. for turkey that could be you know because it brings back a that's point. what it sounds another, like to me another point is you know people are talking about you know ducks eating acorns yep. and, and so they they're resonating this this oaks with ducks eating acorns and 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 they I'm, eat them despite what I, I, I was having a conversation with. Some I, I might have kind of led you into that. Oh yeah, you did. Um, I had I've had this conversation a well few played. times, if you might imagine. That uh, do, do ducks eat acorns? Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, there's some folks working on some stuff right now. I'm not going to steal their thunder. I, I'm, I'm going to let them publicize this stuff when it comes out. But but keep in touch when it when it comes okay. out. These are this is not my okay. data, so I'm not. But they're they're looking at duck poop basically. Yeah. And you can use DNA now to to identify what a duck is eating. Hmm. That's wow, some, that's good technology. A that is good technology uh, there. Oak acorns are in the duck poop. Yep. That's just the, the spoiler alert. They're eating them. Yep. And so just, that that'll come out. And so I know what the, the next thing you'll say. I've never seen one in a duck's crop. Yes, mallards. Mallard duck mallards. Duck mallards. Yep. Okay. So and, I, and well, I've never seen I, one out there. And I so. can blame this on other people, or I can say it came in, but you won't know the difference. So no, it, um, I'm just going to see yeah. it came from you. Yeah. So some of them have. Uh, some I didn't. Write all these, I promise. But have the question was, have you ever killed a duck that had an no, acorn in it? I've only answered that 1,273.2 times. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I've gotten a little bit more ornery over the past few years answering that. Like, So when you go out and hunt the woods, you're going out in the morning, right? Yep. You're shooting a duck when it's trying to come into the woods, right? Yep. It ain't supper time. So why would it have an acorn in its crawl? It hasn't landed there to feed yet. Why would it have? And they process them really fast. I got a really good question from somebody last week. He said, well, yeah, but we should see them if they were in there, came in and landed after y'all stopped hunting and got out of there, and they came in and fed. Yeah, but we, we should see it. Yeah, but obviously thousands of ducks have been killed. Somebody should see one. Oh, I'm... I mean, hard generally, we're I mean, are we, are we we're talking full about of rice. Are we talking about Bigfoot? There's lots, lots of rice lots, in Arkansas. Lots of rice. <laughs> where we're at. So. Are we talking about Bigfoot? Are we talking about Bigfoot? Because yeah. nobody's seen Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've seen plenty of pictures of uh, acorns coming out of a duck's crawl, too. So uh, it, it, it happens. These things. Is it just a certain kind of acorn? Small is it, ones. Is it rare? How rare like, is it? What we would call a pin oak? Pin oak. Yeah. Yeah. So pin oak. There's true pin oak. I, Northeast Arkansas has tr some true pin oak, mm -hmm. which is a bigger, like a tropical oak leaf, right? Or you're talking about a willow oak pin oak, right? Willow, willow oak. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Oak. Yeah, that's what – that that one's great. Cherry bark, it's a higher site, so a lot less common. Um, and nut all mm -hmm. is, a, is a big one. And nut all are kind of cool because they um, they kind of they kind of meter out when they drop seed right so they'll drop seed some in november some in december some all the way up through okay. february and there's a neat, neat study you. that came out of some folks at mississippi looked at that and they looked at how these acorns is kind of cool because it, it lo and behold it kind of lines up when these places mm -hmm. would have floated when ducks would have been here when right. they need resources yep. before they're going back north it all lines up <laughs> really nicely that uh mallard ducks the reason pretty why well there. adapted yeah. to hit those forests and get acorns and invertebrates and and hang out because they like loafing in those areas anything other than a human killing a duck in the winter yeah probably coming from the air so there's absolutely values in a good in a forest way beyond if they never if they never okay they never eat acorns all right fine there's still a super value in a healthy oak forest for everything else that goes on in there producing bugs and that that Invert separation, race, yep. like when they're paired up, where most of them are in like mid December, if they're paired up, they, it's a, it's kind of crazy how they can like there'll be a thousand ducks rafted on the water, but if you really start watching them, you know there's a pair here, there's a pair yep. here. They're keeping right. they're pushing each other off a little bit, and those trees, even though they can see each other, they're like some. They feel like there's less competition in yeah. trees. That's why they hang out there's here refuge. in the winter. Yeah. and they they don't True. no hawks come very few aerial predators you don't see eagles 
swooping over for us, right? They're going out over the mm. rice fields and open yeah. water to take out. Mm. That's true. Try I to pick you. off one. So that that's why forests have all sorts of values for all sorts of critters. So I have a couple of quick questions too yeah. here. Um, have you personally been to some of the areas that, that Game and Fish has had these contractors t- to cut this timber on and inspected it and seen it yourself? Yeah, or, I walked through it in Biometer last year. Yep, a bunch. Okay, and is so then is there someone that y'all have appointed or that you hire through Game and Fish that inspects it after the fact? We have our our habitat biologists oversee those contracts and then make sure they meet the terms of the contract. We've changed it over the years to where they've got to buck things down lower. Like when they leave a top out of a tree, they've got to knock it down lower than what they might. They wouldn't do it on their own just just because they like us. It's in the contract for them to knock that stuff down so, lower. So you'd say stumps, yay high, would not be acceptable, like he was talking about hitting a log. Oh, stumps are going to stump. stumps are going to be there, just like a root wall is going to be when a tree wind throws, and there's a root wall taller than me out there. Is and there just, specs in this contract yeah. for stump yeah. stumpage? There's guess, specs stump. for all of it, and then then it's like on a big picture scale about what's it doing to the habitat, what's it doing for you know rutting roads, that kind of stuff. We're under the umbrella of the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, which if you turned over a cardboard box somewhere in this building, you'd probably find a logo for SFI. But that 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 timber harvest was certified under a national organization, maybe international, I'm not sure, um, Sustainable Forestry Initiative that has certain requirements we have to meet, internal audits, external audits, we have to meet to re- maintain that certification. The benefit to us is it allows, uh, there's a, there was an uh, activity a year or two ago where like, we were able to actually implement a habitat, a forest management practice because we were certified on SFI. Gotcha. And that contractor then, he, he had some other market availability open where, where it worked out better because we were SFI certified. So um, the benefit to us is simply an additional letter level of oversight. And, hey, there's somebody else checking on what we're doing. That's the SFI program. So what we're seeing then, and we're like, oh, my God, what? Wow, this looks like total. A bomb? Like the bombs say went off? Like it got anyway. carpet bombed? Yes. It's like, not going to look pretty. That's acceptable. Like biodevue? Timber harvest does not look pretty. Well, can we make Ever. it pretty? Uh, it can be. I, I was on Is a it private. cost? Because that was a question. I mean, I mean, not well, the inter- not can we not make it that's, pretty? That's a question that come in, the cleanup of it. I mean, it's just. These are bottom land timber. That's why some of it never probably got timbered I mean, or it's harder to timber. It's wet. When well, you get in something that's wet with heavy machinery, it makes ruts. It can, yes. And that's SFI, part of our specs. Make That kind of stuff has to be cleaned up. They can only go in at certain times, certain moisture. Well, it's not right. being done, um, in my opinion. And how well, can you I mean, grow a tree? When? How can you replant a tree in there? Well, they do a terrible job planting pine trees in South Arkansas. I do know that. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we don't own any of that land. <laughs> no, they do a bad job. I mean, how, can you, how can you plant a tree a year after from what I've seen? And we have, I mean, there's videos, pictures floating around. Uh, plant a tree after a timber harvest? Sure. We typically don't. We do a timber harvest so we don't have to have the expense of planting. So you don't replant we watch for natural regeneration to happen, okay. and if it's good, we let it happen. I got you. Dagmar is one of the great ex- – and Hurricane are, sure. have two great I'll examples remember. of that. Dagmar has got phenomenal red oak nut all regeneration, and so does Hurricane. And Hurricane was a what most people would call an extremely aggressive cut about 20 years ago, and now it's got 20-foot-tall nut all oaks that are the next forest. So when would you Congrats replant – say you're going to go in there and plant your trees – Say I seen y'all plant some here a while back. At Hurricane, we planted some. Yep. Okay. So because it was a total you... loss. Okay. There so... were no mother trees, seed okay. trees, so, whatever you want to say. And that's the buck brush didn't develop. Um, um, so what... so at Hurricane, this was a massive, like a sudden sudden timber mortality, and we don't want it to come back in buck brush. That, that was a nice red oak forest not 20 years ago, um, and a sudden die off, like big old nut all just dying out. And so there's a lot of light hitting the ground, Mm -hmm. but probably not a lot of seed produced by those trees the last couple of years before they died, right? So we went in, we said, no, we got to do something here to get ahead of all the other stuff. So we planted a bunch of, uh, planted a bunch of mostly, mostly nut. We collected nut alls from Hurricane and Bauckham Nursery up there at Scott, grew them out for us. And we planted some seedlings 
plant us some acorns. So we're kind of testing which one is going to work best in one of those highly altered wet sites like that. And uh, we're hope hopefully one of them, one of the one or more of those techniques will work. And whichever one works best, we'll use that. And if some of them don't work, future. we'll try something different. Yeah. Right. Well, that's I, nice to know. I know we're yeah, jump, nice jumping know. around. I know that's we're limited on time. Um, Gar there, there, there was there yeah. was a question, Gar so Yeah, yeah. The, we just big hit, just, massive just hit, deadening. Just hit mm. on that real yep, quick. Yep, and we got an amphibious traco in there last year to start working on that to improve drainage, and so we'll be continuing to do that work to improve How? drainage there. So you plan on planting some uh, maybe some trees in there? Maybe we got to see. Maybe. We don't want it. We don't see a reason to invest the time and resources to plant trees unless we get the hydrology fixed first. So if hydrology. we could So if it stays wet, moving. they won't yeah, grow. Yeah. If, we, if we can get hydro if we can get gar slough mulched out so it's draining like it should, then yeah, we'll go back and reforest it. Okay. So you. there's been a problem with gar slough draining for how long? It's been for a minute. Okay, and so what what killed the trees on gar slough? combination of things overbank flooding beavers lots of different things beavers okay so would you say that maybe the beavers do cause a big problem in the spring with with this flooding they can absolutely okay. that's when they're working so, yeah right, that's when they're right, busy right yeah so would you say the neglect on not getting the beavers out would cause this flooding too uh i mean it, it could i mean it neglects a sure. strong word I, but, I that, but that's why that. we're I understand, but that's, that's why we saying. got. Like if if you had somebody trapping beavers, and so you're saying, child, Frank, I which mean, we do. So, yeah. you're, so, you're, so you're saying if they would go out and catch more beavers, we wouldn't have much water exactly. on those trees, and we yes, could have sir. a better that's duck season. Which is why, which is why we've got four contractors working across the state, and that's their part, that's their yeah. only job for us. Yeah, y'all need to go kill I, the bobcats and everything else too. I know we're jumping around. They're they're busy. Okay, we're jumping, but while we're on the beavers, can I ask you about Beaver Gate? Yeah, that's a beautiful subject. Okay. Yeah. Will, you, will you hit hit on that just to touch? Yeah, we we uh, we pay for things way more than trapping beavers. Th okay. Those folks have a job. To, it's a protein three hundred thousand acres that they're contracted to do, and so I, and which in, includes like their job is to keep water moving through these areas, and and so that may include blowing out a beaver dam, killing a lodge so beaver don't hopefully come back. I mean those suckers don't. Oh, they're tough. Easily, right? beavers are tough. Yeah. And, if, and if trapping a beaver is what they need to do to move water, then they're going to do it, right? But it's not. We don't. We don't pay them to go trap beavers. They pay, they do all this other stuff, which a lot of that involves. I kind of equate it to, as all this stuff has kind of come up. I'm like, well, have you ever had a? You know, I, I worked lawn crews in, in high school, and and people, you know, with somebody come by, we'd all meet at the same place every day. We'd hop in the company truck, load it up with all the gear. We'd go to a job site. We had a rotation. Monday's this site, these mm -hmm. sites, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? It's a rotation. We do the same thing every week with the same crew, mm -hmm. right? Every, that's just how long crew works. Works the same amount of hours no matter what. We picked up at the same spot. We all clock, clock in at the same time. Yes. We go work the same jobs. When we get to a job site, one guy's mowing, one guy's blowing, one guy's weed eating, right? Yep. That's just how it works. Yeah. And it's it's kind of similar with what our um, what these folks on waterway maintenance contracts do. They have a circuit. They they are required to visit these places, and they work with our field staff to develop a circuit where they're going through and running these drains with amphibious vehicles, whatever it takes to get through it, and checking them for obstructions on a regular basis. So they go, they'll have some sort of system. Where they go, yep. This day we're checking this route. This day this one, and they move on down the, down the way. And that, that's, and we gotten, that's a communication thing. We haven't communicated mm -hmm. yep. well what those folks do, yep. what the full breadth of their responsibilities I, are. I, mean, I, I agree, 100%. so we that, absolutely we didn't yep. communicate that well. I, I agree, 100%. And so we're I mean, we're we're improving yep. how we communicate yep. <laughs> what those folks do. I believe and, we're and learning a lot him? here. Yeah, and there's contracts. So. That's this oh, yeah. is all contract. And it's through a full RFP process. So there was a new. Bid. I just noticed there was a new bid put out here. What about it? couple months ago well it's back i get my dates mixed up i, I should have had it all with me but uh it was october there was a bid put yeah, out yeah, well, million dollar bid for three years on beaver yeah. control a uh, contractor out of lynn arkansas uh, received that bid uh, uh blake garen yep for beavers yep um my question is so that's a million dollars three-year deal right at it nine nine and some change uh my question is on that is with the beavers uh, so we got a million bucks we're going to pay out for three years of up, beaver up trapping. To, yeah. up, yeah, up to, correct. Right. Yep. Um, 
uh, equipment, depending on what they're going to be doing, I guess, you know, ATVs, right. mini skid steers, thumbs, whatever. What would keep with the resources that they have? You know, you come back to the eight cents tails tax, and uh, Game and Fish looks like you're running on about 122 million uh, budget. This this year, which is the highest yep. we've had in a long time, it's about going to go back going the other direction. Almost half of that was salary. Yeah, um, give or take. Give or take. You know, the rest of it, expenditures, whatever. Yep. So when you're looking at all those numbers, I just, I just, that, that was real quick. Yep. You're, you'll know yeah, the exact, fine. but. With with that being said, with with the available resources, what keeps some of this from being done in house? Why outsource that beaver trapping or some of the cleaning or the what? Why not hire guys in regions and beaver beaver crews? We are capped out on the approved number of positions we have in the agency. There you go. You answered people a lot of questions right there. We're capped out. Nobody knew that. So we, and and back so, to the gentleman's question, like way back when, it was it was left up to field staff to do beaver control at Garslu, yes. for example, and, right? And area managers, and, are they able to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. They, 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 they can carry a 22 and yeah, they yeah, see yeah. a beaver, oh, yeah. they can shoot it in the head. Yeah, they don't I mean, not you know, do it. They, yeah. don't, they, don't, they don't, like, walk by and there's... But so that's not that, their primary role. Is that kind of like the problem with what happened with, with Lake Ashball? I mean, with kind of the... Who's in charge of keeping... My question is, is what, what happened with the problem with keeping it? I know there's a problem with it. Draining. There's well, yeah, it's sand. evidently, yeah, it's exactly. Sand. Yeah. So, what caught, what was the problem with it? Not with, with someone not dropping the ball with keeping water in it. I think the, I think the fairest way to say that is just communication. Okay. Yep. I think that's it. I think it's the most gotcha. honest answer to give you. Yes, so, I think a lot of this it's is just communication. communication. Uh, like, then that was internal. Yeah. Big organization most, and most, stuff internal. falls through the cracks at well, times. I mean, nothing's, get, nothing's perfect, somebody right? Somebody needs to get paid to communicate. Well, there was there, – there's – Hey, dude. That um, – yeah, the, I, I would say that that was in – we've had lots of conversations over the years about yes. ash ball, right? That thing's been not a great fishery for a long time, but it's important to people in the area as a fishery, even though it's not – You used to have great tournaments there. Yeah, it, it, catch early on. Or great fish. Had the new lake effect, right? You flood up a new lake, create a new lake, you, get, you catch big bass, big brim, everything's great for a while, right? And then it's then it's like, wait a minute, this thing is built on sand, right? It's a, it's an out so star. It, the so river. it leaks. It leaks. Bad. And we just did some core sampling up there. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out – what the long term is for Lake Ashball, it's going to be a spot for ducks to sit and be happy for a long time. And we need to figure out what to do for fishing as well. Because it's, it's, it may, for a lot of us who, you know, you like to catch big bass, you're not going to go to Lake Ashball to catch big bass. Yep. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that's in the area, that place is highly valuable. That is their spot to go fish. Absolutely. Right? And so it, you and I may look at it and kind <clears> of <throat> like, I don't, I don't know, man. Why would I fish there? Not valuable yeah. enough. But it's important. It's important to a lot of people in the area. Same right. with same and, with Hollowell. Yeah. It's yeah. important to ducks. Most definitely. It used to be a, used to be a big bass lake. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. And the locals fished it a lot. Way back when. It was and, crappie and, and bass it's and now everything. A, it's now a moist soil unit. Yep. And and so there was a plan at it uh, you know, when all this got stirred up with the timber and uh, Dave Donaldson yep. issue. Sorry, yep. take you back up That's north. All right. Yeah. Um you know, people were kind of saying that Game and Fish sold fear with that because the opening line was decommission Little Dam, you know, Little River Dam. It, it was. So it just, uh, which there was a, you know, it's just a pause there. You, I, I, I saw it too, and I was like, I did too. What? And then the, you're then, talking about the decommission of Dave Donaldson. Then take just the a levees, few, take the dam, take, yeah, and yeah. even Lake Ashball becoming a moist soil unit. Well, that, that was on the agenda. So was? my question is, what was decommission? I mean, it's what we read. And about four slides later, there was a big fat red line yep, through it. Yep, yep. But my question is, that's that's the balance of transparency. Why? And of, and why is why? that fear sold? It was, and then it backed off. It was why? boom. It was. Oh, to, we're gonna take it back. No, it was. It was. I think it's not about fear. It was it, on the we're, table. We're trying to. Yeah, but it was it was about transparency. Like I, I think it's people, so someone come up and thought that that's the best idea. I mean that so, so there's some there's an employee with Game and Fish that thought, hey, this is this is the best thing I got. I'm going to write that down and we're going to put it up there. Oh yeah, we said we, I mean, we I clearly said that in both presentations I gave that we started with, hey, if we're going to go this direction, and we just want to make like do the best thing we can to make sure this is a sustainable forest a hundred years from now. 
The first solution is to take everything out. You won't have any GTRs. And just let it naturally flood? And Yeah, if, if, if you, all we cared about, if that was the only objective, and it's maybe a little bit cheaper, maybe, if that mattered, but, like, if that was, if that was it, that's what we would do, right? So it's this idea of transparency versus finality. Our director talks about this a lot internally. Like, hey, we're talking about a lot of plans for things, and... We're trying to be transparent with people about what is going in, what what is in the thought process, what contributes to decision making, and so there's risk in transparency. Mm -hmm. There's risk in telling people that hey, all this stuff, I mean theoretically could be on the table, but we're not going to do that because we also care about these other objectives. So it was a balance of transparency versus having a final plan in place. And so, so going into that, did y'all think it would stir people up like it did? Uh, I was, yeah, but I would think people would see four slides later. There was a choice made to take one slide that was incorrect. That was a, a that was the beginning of a progression of a discussion. There was an active choice by someone to say that's what I'm going to inflame people with. When just a few minutes later. Here's what we're currently thinking, right? So, so maybe, maybe I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not. Maybe that is, was just a bad choice. It wasn't maybe, woe is me. I'm not like some. It's not a pity it. party. Yeah, but yeah. it's like you, you kind of that to be fully transparent. We wanted to tell everybody everything that's gone into our thought process. Well, that was a bad decision. Well, hmm. maybe so. It was also a bad decision to pick the wrong slide yeah. that was no longer on the table. And so that was a bad decision. So I sure don't do that again. You control what you you kind of try to control what you can control, and and it's transparency. Um, yeah, in hindsight, I don't I don't know if we'd do it differently, but um, yeah, you would. The transparency part of it is what we were trying to accomplish there. Yeah, yeah. So, and and it bit us a little. And bit. then I, I did it. I too. know I know we're jumping. I'm just trying to get through as much as as we can. I, I know sure, we're, we're pushing. Time, I, know we're, I know we're pushing, yeah. but they of course that stirred people up, and then now this eight cent sales tax, and. Do you want to hit on that? Like, if they get it on a ballot to vote it away, like affecting Game and Fish's funding, and you know half the money comes from that, yada yada. I mean, it'd, be you huge, wanna, it'd be a huge, a huge negative outcome for all the constituents. It sounds of like, I mean, it sounds like it's salaries, and the guy, you guys are tapped out anyway with the. Uh, I mean. Sure. I mean, well, it no, sounds no, like no, to me, no, it's, he's it's tapped out on employee people, numbers. The num- yeah. Yes, okay. they, they can hire contracts. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. yeah, yeah, we can hire contracts. How many people work for Game and Fish? <sighs> I just, I can't find that information. Fifty now, uh, maybe, okay. mm-hmm. maybe like five, it's in the middle five hundred. Don't be lying to okay. you. It's uh, and then who sets that? Is that something that could maybe be adjusted, so that these contractors aren't taking advantage of the taxpayer dollars, and we could get more. Good employees in these positions and well, I, make stuff cheaper. A couple right. answers. I don't think you go out there and cut trees. <laughs> Co- <laughs> couple <laughs> answers. I, <laughs> Sorry. I, I would say that this the, is just stuff I hear, and I'm just no, no, I, I, those contractors are not taking advantage of us. I'll kay. say that. Okay. And then the legislature sets the total number of employees we can have. Okay. We're a constitutionally independent agency, uh, but sort of. Sort of. Like, it's funny, through all this conversation, people say, audit them, you know, audit, of, audit game. We get audited all the time. Yeah. We're audited all the time yeah. by the legislature well, it's just and the federal government. Because well, I think it's the appointed, it's I mean, the appointed it's positions money. by the governor, I think, is, yeah, is people's governor. problem. Yeah, yeah, that's, the that, that's a whole other deal. That, it's, we could talk about that for... We're audited all the time by both state folks and federal folks because a large portion of our money comes from federal aid, which is... So the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service audits us on a regular basis, Legislature, legislative audit folks, they come and set up shop in our in our building all the time. I think our, our CFO would get mad at me, but I think it's annually, maybe more. Um, we're audited all the time, just like any other state government agency. But our, our bu- actual budget caps and our position caps are set by the legislature. Gotcha. Even though kind of within that we can say, yeah, we can spend on this or that. There's these broad categories. We could go like way off into a wonky discussion you don't want to have. I'm guessing you don't want to have about all these different categories of funding and stuff. But at a big scale, the legislature puts the side, broad sideboards on what we can do with that. So yep. they have total control on the total number of people we can have on the payroll uh, and the total. And, and your we have. number 550, that's enforcement. <clears throat> yeah, everybody. 
fisheries, it's total. That's, that's the whole state. That's total. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Total number. Yeah. yeah. But I can get back. I'll, I'll <clears throat> I can get that final yeah. number. Yeah. So yeah. you're yeah. saying if you presented in front of whoever it is you can do this to, say, you know, we're paying these contractors for this purpose and this purpose, we could actually use more employees for the simple fact that this is the amount we're paying. We can pay employees the amount that we pay our guys that take care of our WMAs, this amount, it's going to get us down there decently a lot less. Would that be something that, that Arkansas Game and Fish could do? Well, we've, uh, you go back to the last legislative session and look at our proposal. Sure. So okay. it's, we will. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, our, our, our director is very active in trying to um, get more positions. So he would rather. Particularly for habitat work. So they'd rather spend more money to a contractor than they would to hire someone else. Well, I think what he's saying I, is it's not. They can't hire anymore. Yeah, we I mean, see. They, they can't hire anymore. They the got legis- rules, man. The legislation. Five, oh, okay. They would if they could. That's rules. what I'm hearing. I got you. Somebody made a rule. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a, and this you. is not, I want to be very clear, this is not finger pointing type stuff. This is just, it's it's just government checks and balances, yeah. which I support. Um, but it, it's, hmm. it's, our director is, is very active in figuring out the long-term vision for the agency and, okay, what kind of staffing do we need? You know, you don't want to be, because you you go too far too, right? You get all of a sudden. Yeah, you, get you might too have many, too many people. You get too right? many people involved. Nothing gets done. And we, of course, nobody really wants to do anything no more. They there's a balance there. Check. You know, there's a balance. So we're trying to strike that balance with the requests we make. Yeah, we struggle to the legislatures. That's coming up. We do it biennial, so the state agencies have to go present a mm-hmm. biennial budget request, which has people and what we're going to spend on these big categories. That's coming up, twenty twenty. I don't even be lying to you. It's it's in a year or so, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> so no. I, I wait. I, I fill in information when the folks who are really good at this ask me for the We're not holding you to any of this, yeah. Luke. Yeah, but that's kind yeah. of, that's a real, that's like three yeah. minutes into the process of how all that works yeah. and the checks and balances work. So, yeah, we're, we're, we got plenty of audits going on. So nobody should worry about us not being audited because that happens on a regular basis. I well, like you. I said, everybody points fingers. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, hey, it's, I mean, if we want real changes done, maybe we should. Maybe you should run for commissioner. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm all for it. You know, I like to get yeah. stuff done. That'd be, yeah. not, that'd be real good. You're available. Available. Y'all want me to uh, do that? We have to talk, sure. Sarah. Yeah. What's it cost now? I have no idea. We won't. We do want Sarah. It's, 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 it's a voluntary us. appointment. That's all yeah. I know. We do yeah. want Sarah Huckabee to come up. And, yeah, we should. You know, we should. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Yeah. yeah, that's come great. on, Sarah. We, hey, we're a big fan of you yep. and, and what she her. does. She's good. Absolutely. She's good. She yeah, is yeah. great. We yeah, we definitely love her. Well, I, I would say all in all, this answered a bunch of questions, um, and I think people watching is going to learn a lot. And I think we narrowed it down to a lot of its communication. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. when y'all sure. when y'all think. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think so. Education, communication, education. communication is a big deal. And I also think that a lot of it is um, what's best for the force is not what's best for your duck hunting. Well, and it's that's, that's a balance true. we got to walk, right? You know, and a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, they just say, you know, the duck hunting y'all are messing up our duck hunting, but but what's best for the force is not what's best for your duck hunting. The only, the you only long term, the only pushback would be the long term, right? right. Long term yeah. duck hunting. Or short term duck hunting, right? And yeah. we're trying to focus on long term duck well, that's hunting. That's really, I mean, that's which is good. painful. Which is it, painful. It, it, yeah. it is painful. It, it can be painful. Let me put it that yeah. way. Well, yeah, that, oh, that was well. Sure. That was. Yeah. I totally agree with what Cus said. It's a long term well, versus just short. When you get yeah. into that, the same turkey hunter and the same the duck hunter, they water's bad for turkey. I mean, you just it don't <laughs> oh, it doesn't know. all work. Yeah, I mean, we don't does, go to buy money to kill turkeys. Doesn't though. work together, you know. Yeah. You'll go to South Arkansas either. Yep. No, no South Arkansas either. <laughs> we well, got to do something about the well, pine tree. Or, uh, or big deer. Yeah, that's right. South Arkansas, you ain't going to find none of the above. I've learned for this. I got a today. tattoo on my arm. You can see it in the earlier podcast, whatever. I got a buck tattoo on my arm, right? So I go there and I get this tattoo done. I get to the house. I'm starting looking at it. I say, damn, that's, that's a 120. I mean, the two put a 120 of ours. Hey, you got a Just because I'm from Dallas County, I mean, yeah. I get to wear a 120. So I had to yeah. go back and turn at least to yeah. a 140. Add a couple extra tines. Yeah, you nothing know. to it, right? Yeah, it is what it is, it. He, I, I made him add, make it bigger. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I did. Get well, to set goals, right? Yeah, set goals. But I do want bigger deer, and I do want bigger fish. You know, I mean, come on, I mean, right there with you. I, I like to see something from from you guys to put a plan together. And the meetings this weekend, and, in Pocahontas, yeah. right? And this Jonesboro. Saturday, this <laughs> Saturday, this Saturday, two, two of them, two of them, same day. Yep. Absolutely, everybody needs to go to that. Everybody needs to go to that. Yeah, everybody needs to go there. 
Yes. They're yes. also we'll, the meetings for Biomeda sometimes? Yeah, we'll have talk. We'll have, um, it'll kind of be a, a brief presentation thing, but then there'll be some Q&A and there'll be some uh, folks set up around the side. So if you got questions, and we'll have information up there about some other project as well. So if people have questions and they want to go talk to somebody off to the side and ask about this project or that project, they'll be able to. It's not like we're going to say, well, you don't have a question about Black River. You got to, right. you know. Right, yeah. right. Get out. That's not going to happen. We'll answer whatever whatever comes I up. I got you. I got good you. Deal. So everybody needs to go to that. Absolutely. It'll be a good time, you know. And uh, well, we're about out of time, so I think we'll wrap cool. this thing up. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah. Learned yeah. a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, Very appreciate great. it, Luke. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Thank Luke. you. In, in closing, do you th it, so these people that are just mad at Game and Fish or mad about the timber, is there anything you could tell them to just make them feel better? <laughs> you know, gonna everybody a, wants a participation <laughs> trophy. We're just going to have better. a better season. Yeah, listen, so. can you, you got anything that just man, just make somebody feel warm out there that's listening? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not, uh, you yeah, got man, trained biologists aren't really good at that. <laughs> if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> that's, that's not our expertise. I oh, just got to uh, say, so. just got to say, like, hey, can I practice as a uh, commissioner? Can yeah. I practice? Hey guys, it's gonna get better. We're making changes for the future. Yeah. We ain't necessarily worried about you. We're just worried about your grandbabies. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. The longevity. Is that, go. Go. I, I, <laughs> is that pretty good? Is that pretty good, Luke? I'm, I'm not gonna argue with that. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's what it's for, right? I work so hard, you know, for my son and my it, grandson. I mean, if you guys is. are actually making steps towards the future of the forest, so it's, it's a it's 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 legit. I appreciate that, and that is our objective, which means You've all done this, I'm sure, in your business. You've made decisions that are mm -hmm. about out here that that's right. probably hurt today. Absolutely, absolutely. And so that's absolutely. I'm not trying to compare apples to apples. No, I mean, that, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you're 100 percent right. It's, I mean, it's tough. Some people don't understand why we do this, and you can't explain it because they don't know what it will feel like in the future. And it's you can't you can know the now, yeah. but it's really hard to see the future. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, we, we we are really good at building boats. We we've learned a lot of problems and issues we've dealt with, and some people don't understand why we do what we do. You I'm know, sure. and, maybe and we should put game and fish in some of these boats. And only uh, well, we would if they'd pay us a little extra money. I know. Too I mean, cheap they, on their they, bills. They get plenty. Of, <laughs> they get plenty cheap. of tax money. <laughs> I can't. But they want They want. <laughs> they want to offer like nothing for it. They, anyways, they don't want the best boat. They don't. They don't need the best. Well, they gotta it's have fine. a fast it's boat. Fine. You guys gotta get a fast boat. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not involved. In but you know what? Purchases. I ain't gonna. You know, I might not even sell them to them. You know, I gotta. You know, my customer might get mad at me. Yeah, our customers have a thumb up. I mean, they gotta go. That's they gotta right. go. That's good right. luck they catching our they guys. They see. They see the green jeans, baby. We're gonna go. <laughs> they see them in a in a havoc. They would probably yeah. have yeah. an issue. Hey, yeah, no yeah. green jeans can't get no fast hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Listen, I do have some friends that are possum cops. I do. Hey, I, I got, do, I, got, I, I do got, have friends that are possum. I got some oh, nice, yeah. I got some nice friends. I have a cousin that is. I got, I, I got some, good. I got some green jeans that are friends. You know, so great mm -hmm. fellas. Mm -hmm. They're out yeah. there doing good things too. They are. They, yeah. they do good. <laughs> what I don't like about the game wardens though is like I couldn't be one because I love to hunt and fish. It'd be like, like, they always, yeah, they always got to be working. You'd have like a conflict of interest. I they, just couldn't be a good game warden. They think it's like a glory to... job, and all they do is oh, hunt no. and fish. No, no, they're working. I know they're working. No, I, it's not. I mean, so hey, good job, guys. I'm glad you guys are out there doing it. And yeah, everybody hates seeing you guys walk up. It's yeah. not. Don't take it personal. You know, I'm, just... I'm confident they don't. They're well adjusted. Oh, oh they're, they they're, are. They are. They're, mm -hmm. hey, They've heard it all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely oh, support gosh. our law enforcement. And, yeah. Thank uh, y'all. Appreciate what you guys do out there in the game wardens and everything. So. Anyways, let's wrap this thing up. Absolutely. Everybody watching this, leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Check us out on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify. Look at our race series. We've got new race episodes coming out. It's going to be cool. So Yeah, don't forget to check out our store. We sell got a lot of new uh, hoodies and jackets and all kinds of fun stuff. And we're also selling fishing poles now, right? Yep, we are. <laughs> uh, that's for another podcast. But uh, see you guys later. Check us out later. Yep.